What's up, everybody? Welcome to Leaders of Lifestyle, a podcast all about real estate, sports, and entertainment. Take a deep dive with me into the world of high-end lifestyle and get exposed to the different leaders behind the scenes of it all. So let's get right into it. Welcome, everyone, to Leaders of Lifestyle podcast. I'm your host, Michael Ferraro, and today's guest is Eric Dungy. Eric is a proud Compass agent. He's the official luxury realtor of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're going to talk a lot about that. Eric's specialty is working with professional athletes. Eric is a former Division I football player at the University of Oregon and the University of South Florida. Eric is uh, not only familiar with the day-to-day regimen of top-performing athletes, he has also built an impressive roster of clients nationally. So, Eric, thank you so much for being on with us. Oh, thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on. So um, we were, you know, obviously we try to look up people that we think are really interesting to have on. You, you definitely popped up because you have such a fit to what a lot of this podcast is about, sports entertainment and real estate. Um, but before we even get into that, how's the Tampa market? Man, it's on fire. It's funny. Just like a lot of probably realtors in other markets, you know, go back to 2020, you know, March, April, 2020, and you're thinking, I don't know what's going to happen. Are we going to be into a recession? And, you know, are we gonna, you know, thinking all the worst things. And then kind of after a month or two, things picked up and people are moving here. People are leaving the, the suburbs, going to the city and vice versa. So our market's been on fire. It's, it's been crazy here the last year or so. So you're doing well, too. That's excellent. <laughs> you could say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we talk to people from all over the country and it's interesting. This time is this real estate boom is across the market. It's good everywhere. Yeah. So congratulations on a hot market and uh, and that's good for everybody. Um, okay. So um, I was a big athlete myself. You, uh, I think it's so interesting. We talk about professional athletes and the lifestyles they have and um, being a broker who works specifically with professional athletes, obviously the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, there's a specific set of skills that you have to have to be a broker that works with a professional athlete, especially a, a football player. Um, and you grew up around it. Your father was, is, was obviously one of the, the best professional football coaches ever. Um, so you grew up around it, but what do you think it is about becoming a, a professional athlete or football uh, broker works specifically with those um, agents that's different than just a regular um, commercial or the regular residential broker? Yeah, I would say in some ways it's very similar, but then in some ways it is definitely unique. I would say the biggest thing is just the trust edge. Um, trust is important with all your clients, but especially with athletes, it's just harder to earn their trust. Um, they're just typically, they're used to people always wanting wanting something from them. And so they're a little bit more guarded when they meet somebody. So it definitely helps for me to kind of come from that background and coming from that world where a lot of times they presume that I don't have a handout. I just want to help them find their house or help them sell their house and, and that's it. So that definitely helps just earning their trust. And then of course, like, you know, they're going to be instantly turned off if you're like a fanboy or anything like that. But yeah. I think the biggest thing is just that, that, that trust barrier initially. So obviously you being around it all your life and being an athlete and your father being around it, um, how do you think that you being around it helped you to perfectly fit in this genre of being the specific broker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Yeah, I think it just goes like to that, that shared experience. I mean, there are athletes are like, you know, what the 1% of the people that make it from high school and college and make it the pros, but to at least have somebody say, Hey, I kind of, know what you're dealing with, whether I played in college like you played or I grew up in the NFL, you know, around the NFL, like you're in the NFL now, yeah. kind of just being able to rely on that shared experience with them and just being able to be like, hey, I, I get your schedule, I get the craziness, I get what you're looking for, and I know what things not to ask you, what things to, to not even bother you with, I know not to hit you up on Sunday mornings, you know, just whatever it is, but just understanding right. their, yeah. their lifestyle, their career, knowing that the times that they can talk, the times they can't talk, and just kind of be able to work, be flexible and kind of just understand their world. Do you, do you have to educate a lot of the athletes maybe on the the best financial decision to do with their money in real estate, whether it's, hey, you know, maybe this isn't the time to buy. Maybe it's better to rent right now. Maybe, yeah, you shouldn't do that or you should buy this. Did, is that come up a lot? Because you have a young person who maybe right out of college and now they're a professional athlete with all this money and they don't really know what's best to do. Is there a lot of educating or I think a lot of people think that like, oh, I'm just glad I have this kind of client. I'm just going to shut up and do whatever it is that they say to do. No, definitely a lot of educating. I mean, one thing with athletes, if you if you take advantage of one guy or one girl and, and do something bad by them, you're pretty much done in the whole sports space after 
that. So <laughs> you definitely can't do that. And um, like kind of like you said, though, there's, there's, I feel like there's more awareness on, on making good financial decisions, you know, like the 30 for 30s about being broke and just different stories. I think most athletes now like understand that and, and don't want to do that. But now they seem to know how. So sometimes it's a young person that's like, hey, I want to get into investing. You're like, all right, I get that. But like first year on the team, just got here, you know, maybe just rent for a little bit until you kind of figure things out. So it's like just kind of having to pull the reins back sometimes and just give them some strategy. Because I think most most athletes now, they, they want to do the right thing. They want to they want to build generational wealth. They want to you know build passive incomes. So and now it's just how to do it. So they basically so, you know, do they and most of them probably look at it like a job. And and they look at it like, listen, I go to work, I make my money, but a lot of like for football, it is it is it guaranteed contracts? They know they're getting that money, or if something happens, um, where hey, listen, I could get hurt, something could happen. Are they still thinking about passive income and investing and all that stuff? Is that majority of people? More, uh, yeah, so I mentioned the uh, non guaranteed contracts, and that's really interesting. A sport like baseball, if you sign for ten million, you're going to get the ten million. Mm. Football, it doesn't always work out like that. You may get two million to, on the signing bonus, then you may have you know weekly roster bonuses, and then a, a roster bonus at the end of the season before the next year. And so you have to figure out how much are they actually going to have to work with. So they may sign for ten, but really only have three. And then from that three, what can we work with? But then to your point, though, yeah, I think a lot of people realize um, limited opportunities to play, especially football. You know, average career is like three point four, three point two years, something like that. So let's say less than four. And so within the short amount of time that I'm going to have, you know, to earn the most money that I can. How can I maximize that? And then how can I, you know, set myself up long term so that I don't have to go do a nine to five when I'm done playing if I don't want to? I can maybe just, you know, invest or I can just do things I want to do, hobbies or things like that. How how what's what would you say the amount or rate or percentage of your clients that come to you and say, hey, just signed or is my second or third year or whatever? How many of them buy compared to doing leases? Because I would think that although they are financially capable to buy, right? No problem. But a lot of them, if they get hurt, if they get traded, if something happens, do you do a lot more leasing than you do buying for pro athletes? Yes, a lot of leasing. So it's obviously a cool designation to be the official realtor of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I'm super grateful for that. But yeah, out of, out of the whole team, say I work with every player on the team, I don't, but say I did, probably 60% of the guys are, are renting. And then the guys that do buy, some of them may buy in Tampa, but then a lot of them may buy wherever they're from and they may just rent in Tampa. So so the actual guys are actually buying in Tampa. There may be, you know, maybe 10 to 12 guys on the team, maybe maybe more than that, but a good majority of them are renting, which is which is totally fine and it makes a lot of sense for for those situations. Got it. So you were obviously an athlete yourself. You played football. So you came up and, and then you played in college and you were successful. And your father had a very successful professional coaching career and playing. And then it was time for you to go to the next level. Why did you go into real estate as opposed to, you know, maybe going in and being a coach and trying to follow in your father's footsteps? What was it about real estate? Yeah, it's interesting. I, um, I think the biggest thing for me was just the desire to kind of have, not that real estate have the best work-life balance, but to have more work-life balance than a, a okay. football coach. Okay. I grew up with my dad who was amazing and like took me to work all the time and like took me to the games and everything. But at the same time, you know, he'd be in at, you know, 7 a.m. or something like that and he'd be working until 9, 10 p.m., seven days a week during the season, yeah. five days a week off season, you know, a little vacation here and there. I was kind of like wanting to be like, all right, how can I still have a, a career that earns well and can, you know, take, I can support myself, but maybe I can take a day off here or there, you know, on a weekend or if I want to see my family or things like that. So I got into real estate kind of hoping that I would be able to have more control over my time. Sometimes that's not always the case, but, um, but yeah, it's interesting. I actually had an opportunity. I was taking my real estate class. This is probably five years ago, taking my course. And I went to Philadelphia and my old college coach, Chip Kelly was coaching with the Eagles oh, at the time. Yeah. Yeah. My dad spoke to the team. It was right before training camp. Just, you know, give them a little pump up speech during training camp. Uh, I came out there. And it was like, a, and then um, a couple of days later, they offered me a like a very entry level position, like basically uh, they call it um, quality control, which is like the lowest level you can be as, as a coach. Um, but like, still amazing opportunity. Yeah. And I think that most people probably would have said like, oh, absolutely, a, a chance to coach the NFL. But I was exactly. kind of like, for some reason, um, for some reason, I just was like, you know what? I started my real estate class. I kind of want to see this through. I want to see you know what I can do with this. And I just, it just in my gut said, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my license and kind of see see where this takes me. 
And that was kind of the day that I kind of officially <laughs> chose wow. real estate. Over How did your dad take that? I mean, your dad wrote a great book. I'm a huge fan of his work. If you've ever done any research, you should go and, and look up his dad. He's just a great man and just great wisdom. But how did your family take that? Was it like, oh, Eric's always talking about doing real estate. He's probably going to be, or was it like out of left field? Um, no, I'd kind of looked into it for a little bit and was talking about it. And then when I kind of had to weigh the options with my dad, um, I'm going to say this like as humbly as possible, but I felt like at that time I could always get another job in the NFL. Like I know that sounds crazy. No, no, listen, but, man, it makes, it's cool. It's cool. Let's be, real. Let's be real about it. That's fine. I was like, right, I'm taking my class already. I've already started it. I'm a big believer in like starting something and finishing it. So I've already started yeah. this class and I'm like thinking like, all right, if I, if this real estate thing is just not for me. I can probably find another very low level job being the lowest person on the totem pole and having to work my way up, you know? So sure. I was like, I can start in the NFL this year. I can start it next year and 20 years from now, you know, not really going to matter. And so that's kind of how I looked at it. And me and my dad kind of talked through it and it made sense. And so we just, so, you know, he was not that he was going to give me permission to, but like, he, you know, he saw, saw that I was thinking intelligently and, and was like, all right, go for it. That's awesome. That's great. And then, so, you start off on this career. How did you get, because a lot of people are going to be listening and watching this and go, okay, well, his dad obviously had a successful coaching career, but how did you become the luxury realtor for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Did you get the dis distinction? Like, how, was yeah. this a plan thing? Like, how did you do that? Yeah, um, it wasn't actually planned to be the official realtor of the Bucks, but I just I honestly always had this vision that I would be a, an athlete's realtor. And so after the first couple of months of my real estate career, wasn't really going anywhere, which, um, you know, I just kind of, you know how it is. You pass the test, you have your license down, you're like, all right, now what oh, do I do? Yeah. After a few months, I was like, you know what? I need a niche. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I was like, yeah. what can I do that's maybe a little bit different? I was like, all right, I used to play football. I know a couple of football players. Maybe in some way I could do some kind of football real estate thing. I didn't really put it together. And then um, <laughs> shortly after that, I met my, my partner, John Fincher, who, um, who actually knows Ben, and that's how everybody got connected. Oh, okay. ben Long. Mm -hmm. um, and John was doing some similar stuff with athletes, and so we just kind of decided to join forces. And then from there, it was just a matter of just kind of like just trying to get a seat at the table anywhere we could go. So we'd show up to the NFL Combine, the MLB Winter Meetings, any, any player that had a charity dinner, any kind of event, just trying to get in the mix. And then after a few years, um, you know, we were working with some players here and there, um, the Buccaneers reached out and, you know, they asked if they wanted to be an official partner, which we said yes in about 30 seconds. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we just kind of, I guess in a way, spoke it into existence and then started kind of day by day just trying to plant seeds, not really knowing, you know, which one was going to hit. Well, you started and, showing up at the Combine. You, you were going to the places actively where the professional athletes were. So, and it was just making sense and you were taking action and kind of manifesting kind of what that was. Did you... um you know, going, going into that thing when you were, when you were starting from, you know, I, I have this idea and I want to go up and you were building this, you know, people see the show ballers, right? So they go, Oh, sports yeah. agents, real estate agents, probably dress the same, talk the same, drive the same kind of cars, take out, you know, the athletes on a, you know, a yacht <laughs> that they rent and, you know, get them, you know, bottles of Dom Perry. Is it like that for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers kind of, a pro athlete search where you're trying to work with them or is that more fiction than fact a lot of fiction i will say i had one kind of ballers moment um early in my uh in my real estate career john and i were meeting a um like when i started moving on to the combine a lot of that was just to be adjacent to other people adjacent to sports so at the yeah. combine every sports agent every financial advisor every marketing person every you know all those people are there so it's just like a place to rub shoulders they're with just them. drooling yeah yeah. And so okay. we, I went to a, um, a kind of high profile um, performance compound here in Tampa. And it was like, so I go in there to go meet with the owner who's got a, a ton of football and baseball clients. And we're just chopping up about, you know, real estate and how we can help his guys. The music's blasting. There's, there's like athletes working out in the gym. The gym is like like waterfront. So you can see like the, like the, the golf from the gym. And I was like, man, this kind of feels like ballers. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're kind of in there. Yeah. Yeah, so that was awesome, and we were like, you know, we had our nice suits on that day, and it was just like a cool, a cool day. But most days aren't like that. Most days are a little bit more boring. Um, and even when you are like with the athletes, like they usually they drive their own car, and you meet them at the house. Um, 
you know, like there's yeah. no Dom Perrier. <laughs> oh, they're not but, popping bottles as they're coming. You know, yeah, no, no, okay. Like, <laughs> and that's where in the Ferrari all the time. All right, got it. Yeah, one of my big clients in the Bucks. I don't want to say his name, but um, like when I meet when I met him to like look at his house, he's driving like his. It was a nicer car, but it was like a car for his family with like his kids in the car seats in the back. <laughs> and yeah. after the closing, I bought him like a little uh, little onesie for his newborn. So it wasn't like bottles getting yeah. popped and like Ferraris going there. It was, it was I, you, you people car. just think like they're get done with the practice, flip the helmet, jump on the yacht, take the yacht to the house, and that's what they do. And they just buy stuff <laughs> all the time. They're just always buying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, so that's a good myth for everybody out there. No, it's not always Ferraris and yachts and buying everything all the time. There is some work and some yeah. downtime. Um, and, and, and I think Tom uh, Brady bought a house right over in our area in Greenwich. I don't know what it ended up happening with. I think he sold a place in Massachusetts and bought something in, in our area. So you do get some crossover sometimes with clientele, I'm sure, that, that buy stuff down there and buy stuff up here. And Absolutely. A little bit more the established kind of athlete that's kind of ready for that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah. so I want you to, I mean, just f for people that maybe hear it and they really, you know, have probably more myth than actual facts. I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, that, that's seriously, if you say on oh, the, the, the luxury broker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you're like, Oh, I, okay. Well, what are other what are other myths that maybe about what you do in the day to day that are different? You know, you said something that was interesting about um, you were talking to one of the owners about what you can do for the clients and buyers and sellers and different stuff like that. Um, what are some of the myths that people might have misconceptions that you do differently that you are helping in the same way as as something else or like? Can you just clarify some of that for people? Yeah, I mean, like truly, like aside from like the trust and all that stuff. Working with the athlete in a lot of ways is, is just like working with a regular person in the sense of like, all right, like what are you, what's your lifestyle? What's your budget? What are your what are your couple of, uh, main needs? You know, what's your area you want to be in? It's, it's, just, it's just about advising. So do a lot of that. Um, just just as I would with any other buyer or seller. Just you know, just it's a lot of that just translates. Um, and the other thing I would say is I do a lot with um, with kind of the the adjacent figures than the athletes themselves. And sometimes you may never even see the athlete or talk to the athlete or even show the athlete the house. It may be mm -hmm. the advisor, it may be the client services person at the at the agent, the sports agency. It may be just his with this with a client's spouse right. or significant other right. or just with a close friend of the client. Yeah, so sometimes some players like I I speak directly to them. You know, we call and text each other. Other people it's like I've never seen that guy in my life. <laughs> but but I've closed the deal for him. you so in a case like that, you'll have their rep, whether it's an agent or a spouse or something, a helper, you'll have that person reach out to you and say, hey, listen, they're trying to find a place or, hey, listen, they want to sell their place and do this thing over there. And that's how the connection is made a lot of times. Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah, it, it can be there's um, yeah some kind of representative and they reach out to you and say, hey, here's what it is. I found that those times, those those buyers or those clients are going to be even more private than just the average you know, a celebrity when they have their kind of assistant or the representative kind of directing things for them. Right. And so you just, you just kind of roll with it and say, all right, you know, whatever you want, we got it. Keep it super discreet, super low key. And, you know, I have some, some clients where we did pretty big deals and nobody even knows about it. my parents don't even know. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's uh, you said it a couple times. You have the personality yourself. You're an effective person. Happy person, you smile, talk, you know, energy. Like, I want to work with you. I want to hang out with you. I want to talk to you. But you're also an expert in the Tampa market. The thing that you have said multiple times, the trust. They trust you that you're not going to go out there and try to be the celebrity agent yourself and try to tell everybody about all the different stuff you're doing when you're representing them. They want to know that they can trust you. It's private. It's exclusive. Um, what you and work with them is kept to yourself. I, I've heard that a couple of times. That exclusivity is just and trust of being quiet is so, so important, right? When you're, when you're, yeah. Dead. Yeah. And I typically just err on the side of discretion. So if I'm working with a player or a celebrity and I'm not sure how they feel, then I just err on the side of just being quiet about it. If they're inclined to maybe post their own house on social media, then maybe I'll repost their post or something like that. But if they're, I just kind of follow their lead, you know, if, if they're, kind of more private and quiet, then I'll just roll with them on that. If they don't mind a little exposure, then, you know, maybe we'll do that. But 
I just kind of err on the side of just keeping things on the low and just being yeah. discreet. Um, I think it just goes back to me growing up. Uh, it was just, as a child, I felt like it was hard to go places sometimes because you always had people kind of reaching out to you or trying to bother my parents and things like that. So I just feel like, all right, they're probably experiencing something similar. Let me, let me not add to that. Let me be one right. less person that, you know, kind of bothering them or, or kind of take advantage, not take advantage, but just, you know, uh, promote their associations with them. And so I just try to kind of avoid that and, and kind of, and I think most, most of my clients appreciate that. So you've been, you, you, you have, everything man going for you and you got the you got the right attributes and the right skills and i see why so many people would want to work with you and what you got the title that you have where do you see the the future for yourself in real estate in the next you know five ten years regardless of where the market goes but what do you where do you take it from here you think yeah we're really excited really want to i think the the biggest goal i've had and i don't know if this is possible or what i ever have but i would love to be official real throughout the whole NFL. So I don't know how that's going to happen, sure. but sure. Um, all of them, go. every the player. <laughs> so I'm going to speak that into existence and then, and see how the next five, five, 10 years take us, but just trying to grow our network, just trying to take care of, you know, clients one at a time and then, you know, take on the referrals that come from doing that and just do right by people. And then I don't want to put a cap on, on what's possible. Is there one, there, there's not one overarching sp- sports, football, or NFL-related real estate agency. There, there's not. Yeah, I know. know. So that's interesting. Not that's, a, that's something maybe we talk about off air. That, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> um, I think that you, your your story is fascinating. Your, your, your assets and your abilities that you bring to clientele, obviously, I get now I'm speaking to you that this I totally understand. Um, so that's where we are now. I always kind of ask this just for a quick recap. I know the market's been super red hot in Tampa and in Florida and across the country. Um, the clientele that you have, I'm sure they ask the same questions that the clientele that I have has is, uh, do, you, what do you think, where do you think the market's going to go? Is now a good time to invest? What, what do you tell your clients now that are coming in? Maybe their first year and they have some money. And what are you telling them with the, the market? I'm sure that's a conversation you have about investing and buying right now. Sure. Yeah, I think overall, I think Tampa is probably going to continue to grow. Um, I think the success of our sports team has, has helped. Um, our downtown redevelopment led by um, Jeff Finnick, who's the owner of the Lightning, and he's partnered with Bill Gates. They're doing this 10-year, $3 billion redevelopment. So aside from like, the, the spike that COVID gave us, I think yeah. our market is trending upwards anyways. And then you just compound that with people being able to work from home and leave California and leave New York and leave some of these other places, more expensive places to come to Florida. Um, I think I think the Tampa market is going to keep growing. So yeah, I tell clients that you're pretty much, if you want to buy right now, you're, you're, you're buying at the highest it's going to be. Yeah. Could it be higher next year? Perhaps. I can't I can't really promise that. There's a good chance it will be. So if you are going to get into the game now, you have to know that you have to kind of know the, the market you're getting into. You have to know to play to win and also know that, hey, you know, you're buying at the, at the, the peak. So if you're if you're a little bit nervous about, you know, buying too high, then this, this might not be the market for you to invest in. And so I just try to give everybody all the facts. I don't really try to pressure people on one or the other, but just say, hey, this is what the market we're dealing with is. And here's what it's going to take to get a house in this in this environment, in this market. And if you can stomach that, like, let's do it. If not, all good, no pressure. You know, so just, that's kind of how I how I see it and how I kind of try to advise people. Have you ever had, um, this is just, and then we'll wrap up question, but have you ever had an athlete that, go through the whole process. You're like, great, this is going to be awesome. We have a deal set up, all set, maybe locked up, pulled all the contingencies. And then maybe they get hurt. And then you're like, oh no, what's going to, like, obviously their health is number one, but does that ever happen where they have to pull out of deals because they get hurt and they don't know what's going to happen? Does it, does that ever happen? I'm trying to think. I think fortunately for me, I haven't had that situation. The closest I've had is just guys getting traded. Um, oh, or that, or that, right. Yeah. Traded. But even on that, it's been with um, with rentals. So I've had okay. a couple of baseball players that were going to rent and then got traded kind of out of the blue. And it sucks, but you can kind of mitigate the rental. rental. You either have to pay a couple months to get out of it. You can have to have – and I think baseball is good about the, the new team will pay some of your moving expenses, so they're able to help offsets and stuff. So I've had a situation where maybe a guy had to lose a couple months of rent or something like that. But in the grand scheme, nothing too dramatic. Um, fortunately, I haven't had – a purchase that kind of got affected by an injury or a trade or anything yeah. like that. Out of all the sports team professional athletes that you work with, what, what's the, obviously is it football that you enjoy the best and that's your most passionate about helping the, the, yeah. 
Yeah, I think football just because I, I played football and I know some of the guys personally. I might have known them before I started working with them. <laughs> a lot of the baseball guys are awesome guys. <laughs> like I meet them, and I'm like, oh, this is my first time hearing about this guy. <laughs> like oh, okay. they make me the baseball world, but I'm just like, unless you're like, you know, uh, I don't know who's like a famous baseball player, like Derek Jeter, then I'm like, I may not right. be as plugged into you, which is cool right. in its own way to kind of meet somebody and not have any expectations. But it's kind of fun to work with the football guys. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, I think, um, and we, I wish I had more time with you, and we're gonna have to cut it off. I definitely will have you back on and we're definitely awesome. going to be talking off air on the podcast. Is there anything that we didn't go over today that you'd like to touch base on anything for the people listening? No, I'm super, uh, super grateful for you to have me on. I would love to come back and, and do a part two. Um, sure. thank, you, thank you for the time and then hopefully you can do it again soon. Yes. Um, and where Eric, where can people find you as far as websites, uh, social media, your, your Instagram handle, stuff like that? Yeah. So Instagram is Eric Dungy, E-R-I-C, D-U-N-G-Y. I also have a podcast. I haven't put a new episode out in a little bit, but if you want to check it out. You got a out, podcast? Start, I got a Eric, podcast. It should be so, Eric Dungy bye. takes over the NFL. That's what it is. That's. <laughs> it's called um, Inside the Headset. I sit down with some coaches, college and pro, and just talk about life, talk about talk about teamwork, talk about business. Um, so yeah, check that out, Inside the Headset, and then yes. Instagram at Eric Dungy. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, Eric, thank you so much for being on. We will absolutely have you back on. And ladies and gentlemen, Michael for our Leaders of Lifestyle podcast. Till next time.